Yo, what's going on, everybody? It's your boy Noah to explain it bring you guys another review for Boruto 2 Blue Vortex Chapter 4. And dude, this chapter gave us everything from the heartbreaking plot twist that Sasuke's a tree to Boruto begging code to help him fight the Tentel's claw grimes to Kawaki versus Sarda being teased in the future, Kashin Koji officially being confirmed to be alive, and so much more. This chapter, hands down, was a great conclusion for this first opening arc of Boruto 2 Blue Vortex. But with that being said, let's back things up up and let's dive into the review itself because like usual we open up the chapter where the last one left off we see ko looking down at the ten tails main body and as he's doing so he's thinking back to all of boruto's multiple warnings about not taking the ten tails lightly and he's making light of boruto freaking out in the way that he did totally not taking boruto seriously at all however we see that while ko might not be taking this in a serious manner boruto himself is taking this extremely seriously like it's a critical situation with Boruto getting told by the Toad that they're out of time and that he has to act now and that's where we get the bombshell. Boruto has mastered Minato's flying Raijin Jutsu but as expected he's still not as skilled at it as Minato was which is why he's telling the Toad to be quiet because he still needs to concentrate in silence when using that Jutsu. Now this is a really big deal and not just because Kawaki is curious about who Boruto's talking to but it also shows us that for as impressive as Boruto is he's still lacking in using the flying Raijin with him still needing high concentration to perform the Jutsu so he's not at the level of someone like Tobirama or even Minato who could spam the Jutsu like it was second nature in the middle of a battlefield with huge explosions going off. Despite the monster chakra reserves that the Jutsu requires which Naruto's manga tells us it takes three special Jonin pulling their chakra together just to do the basic teleportation it's still really impressive to see Boruto join that very small list of shinobi who can use this jutsu because it's still keeping it exclusive. It's literally the same number of people who know the Rasengan that know the Flying Raijin now, which you need to keep it that way as a trump card like this in order to maintain the mystic aura of the jutsu around it because it has an aura being exclusive around it. We then see Boruto arrive in Ishiki's dimension and Boruto wastes no time by heading over to the Tentails to verify its location, which adds to Boruto's threat assessment of the Tentails and he's outright ignoring Koth this entire time. One, because he's already proven to Koth that he can kill him at any time. And two, because Boruto has deemed the Jubi to be something of a world-ending threat that it basically comes top priority before anything else in his mind, which further adds to the realization that Boruto was spooked by what it was he saw in the future. And now we know why he was so spooked. Standing behind Boruto is a fully humanized version of the Ten Tails, complete with the Rinnegan in both eyes. And the moment Boruto sees it, Boruto immediately begins to start panicking and this is huge up until now the Boruto we've seen outside of the moment he saw Himawari for the first time in three years this Boruto has been emotionless distant and stoic to a degree for the first time we see Boruto in full-blown panic and it isn't because the ten tails standing before him looks like Bug who's been dripped out in Ko's claw marks and has a ten tails chinchilla jacket on it's because Boruto knows the worst case scenario he warned Code about is finally here and he's making it known up front that guy Bug you see stuck in the tree that's not the guy standing before you despite them looking so similar in the face what you're looking at is a whole different monster and it should be treated as such however before boruto can go full into detail boruto is speed blitzed by that ten tails humanoid body and is slammed into the wall and we get our first real sign of assessment of this thing's actual power it's strong it's really strong up until this point boruto was just hacking down ten tails soldiers that he encountered like it was nothing and when he fought against code prior to this boruto was never on the defensive despite fighting someone who is at a beyond Jigen level of power. Boruto has always been on the offensive and complete control when he's fighting, but we see it here when he's having to block the attack. Boruto's grimacing and he's straining, which is insane to think just given how much stronger than Jigen based Boruto is right now. However, that goes back to what Boruto told Code. You changed the Ten Tails fundamentally in a way you don't understand when you gave it your chakra and it now has a humanoid body and this power increase seems to suggest that we're seeing the Ten Tails harnessing its own chakra and Code's chakra simultaneously in a humanoid body for this power increase. Very similar to how a Bijuu's chakra when it's fully controlled is stronger inside of a humanoid body of a Jinchuriki than it is when it's out on the wild on its own. We then see that the Ten Tails is capable of more than just one worded speech like we saw when it attacked Kawaki where it just called Kawaki Otsuski and nothing else. This Ten Tails with both Rinnegan that Boruto's fighting is not only 
being able to recognize who Boruto is, but it's also able to think and formulate sentences to carry on complete conversations with Boruto, taunting him for coming to his death in order to be feasted upon, and Boruto doesn't waste any time now that he sees the threat level rising and performs an unnamed lightning release jutsu to get the ten tails off of his back. Or at least that was Boruto's plan. But as we see, even the best laid plans, they don't work out in the way that you might have originally expected it to, and Boruto falls victim to something that Naruto's manga hammered home to us all the time, which is that you're at a disadvantage when you're fighting a powerful enemy who has unknown powers and abilities that you yourself can't account for, which is why you would see Shinobi like Kakashi tread very carefully when they first battle someone of a high caliber. A classic example being Kakashi using that lightning clone and hiding so he could see the power and skills of pain and also to see if there are more of the six paths of pain in the area before he eventually revealed himself. This ten tails shows it has the ability to modify its body and attempts to digest Boruto by transforming its arm into a mouth and has the intention of swallowing up Boruto. However, Boruto is able to use the flying Raijin to teleport away back to the frog summoning Echo's feet that's holding Boruto's flying Raijin marker which is in the form of that Konoha symbol and the Tento soldier has now taken note of the fact that Boruto is using the flying Raijin jutsu which means given its increased mental capacity Boruto now has to be careful not to spam the jutsu because if he does it against someone who sees it numerous times they can start coming up with counter strategies for it and these Tentels are smart enough to do that. Boruto is quickly realizing that he is out of options and he sees Code doubled down in pain and he quickly undoes the Rasengan Uzuhiko before it can kill Code because Boruto views this one ten tails that he's been battling as being too big of a threat to deal with on his own. However, as Boruto tries to explain to Code that this is the fate that awaits everyone who has been bitten by the ten tails, we see yet another humanoid ten tails has been born while all this battling had taken place and this ten tails has one of the most disrespectful entrances that we have in the entire series. While simultaneously flying in the air above them. Basically watching Boruto struggle with this one ten tails could have stepped in at any point in time is another ten tails who utters the words simply it's chakra while releasing his own chakra signature for Boruto to pick up on it which means that this ten tails can also suppress its chakra like an Utsuki and it's here that we see Boruto with another hint of panic actually drawn in his face because this situation is quickly getting out of hand. The number of enemies they're growing and he's not able to assume that this one is going to be just as strong as the last Tentel who he fought against because this one could be stronger and based off of his clothing with the nine Magatamas on the back of his cloak in the spiral pattern. If Boruto's wondering if this is a stronger Tentel, it very well might could be. While we don't have visual confirmation in the form of his abilities, that set of Magatamas and the spiral on the back of the jacket is the same thing that we saw when you look at Obito when Obito had Tentel's power and when Naruto got his initial six pass power in Naruto volume 71 where Naruto stack the six pass power via the QB cloak and stack it on top of the six pass sage mode that Hagoromo gave him. However what we're seeing here is equally as scary because like the other Tentels this Tentels also possesses a Rinnegan in both eyes which means we have to start accounting for the possibility that this thing can also use the basic six pass jutsu that you associate with the Rinnegan since all those six pass of pain jutsu are jutsu every Rinnegan user has access to. This Tentels is then shown full frontal as he informs Code that it's because of Code's actions that they have awakened and they now have an ego, which is basically these things, they aren't just human in appearance. They now have the full stages of humanity as well in terms of their development. It's not too unlike what you saw in Hunter Hunter with the Chimera Ants where they rapidly developed and even in Boruto where Orochimaru in the anime is purposely watching over the development of his clone son Miski in order to monitor the stages of his humanity. However, this rapid acceleration is a really big deal and for Boruto, you have to believe this is alarming to see. A brainless Tentels, that is one thing, that's something you can deal with. Even the Boruto Kages told Naruto, hey, we can deal with the Tentels. Now, no, though, Suski, that might be a problem and it's because the Tentels is operating purely off of instinct. However, a threat level of the size of the Tentels, it now has the ability to collect information, process information, and make adjustments based off of that information. Now that is something dangerous altogether. Making this worse is this Tentels has the appearance that resembles that of the monk Jigen who is Ishiki Otsuki's felt vessel which might explain why he's flying in the air just like how Jigen could. But that's not the only
only bombshell that we have. On top of a third, ten tails revealing itself in humanoid form. This one appears to have the appearance of Moegi, the squad leader of Shikadai's Team 10, which means Boruto is now solely outnumbered. Even if Code were there to help him out, it just went from a 2 versus 2 to a 3 versus 2. And like the other two ten tails, this female is capable of speech and critical thinking as well, with her flat out dragging Code through the mud, telling him that it's his destiny to be used by others. And this should be something that makes anyone who paid very close attention to Boruto Naruto Next Generation start raising an eyebrow because back when Kawaki versus Code happened, one thing the Code told Kawaki was that both of them, their fates were to be used by others and that they had no free will and that the fate that Kawaki was running from was something that Code himself had long since accepted. Well, with this one line, Code's fate has been thrown right back in his face by this woman and as if to cement that we're getting ready to go through a pending bloodbath, just after the Toad warns Boruto to run away, we have a fourth ten tails humanoids suddenly pop up and this one gives off the most dangerous vibes of them all and for a really good reason it's the one who puts the most visible fear into boruto and has them frozen in place it's now a four versus two which means even if code teamed up their chances of winning they just went down in the toilet meanwhile back inside of konoha kawaki is briefing shikamaru about boruto using an unknown space-time ninjutsu but what's interesting here is that despite boruto literally saying he's using the flying raijin his grand father's jutsu kawaki doesn't reveal the jutsu name to shikamaru and it's for a really good reason boruto used the signature jutsu of minato even with the jinjutsu making shikamaru look the other way at things that should make him question if kawaki's lying about being naruto's son the wheels would start turning in his head as to why boruto learned the jutsu of the fourth hokage and how boruto's even able to actually learn that jutsu it's a calculated withholding of information for a really big reason kawaki knows that if this was a football game game he'd be up right now by two touchdowns on boruto and he isn't trying to do something that can get boruto back in the game to make this more competitive however as shikamaru and kawaki are going back and forth with how to deal with boruto sarda steps in and she starts throwing her weight around flat out on both of them hey you guys are being stupid for your assessment and we get a really good detail in the manga so if you pay really close attention you can see the twitch marks by kawaki's head the moment that sarda steps into the room because it's our first sign that there is real tension that exists between these two and it's important for us to take note of that as readers this is a big moment because it's the first time we've seen these two on screen together since kawaki used the omnipotence and kawaki knows that she's one of the few people who know the truth because as far back as chapter one of boruto to blue vortex she's still speaking on behalf of boruto telling shikamaru he's got the situation wrong sarda takes the opportunity to twist the knife in kawaki even further by telling shikamaru you've got eight at your disposal don't you make her very verify that code attacked the village and that boruto was the one that made him run away it's a very subtle act of defiance by sarda but it's clear she's drawing a line in the sand here and making it known kawaki didn't save the village from code it was boruto and you better not try to lump boruto in with being the one that helped code attack the village he's actually the one that saved it this whole situation it reeks of sarda and kawaki having a chess match against each other and due to the omnipotence shikamaru doesn't realize what's going on here in his mind he thinks he's just seeing another squabble between the children naruto and sasuke but due to the dramatic irony of the situation we as readers we can clearly see what it is that Sarda's doing. She's still trying to get Boruto's execution order tossed out. Now, Kawaki, he's sharp enough to catch on to what it is that she's doing, and he wants her back off. Boruto is Notsuki. He is an enemy because he's Notsuki, and technically, Kawaki isn't wrong. While Momoshiki can resurrect using Boruto's body as a byproduct of Momoshiki bringing Boruto back to life, Momoshiki, he can still hijack Boruto's consciousness under the right conditions, like, say, Boruto running out of chakra. If that were to happen, Momoshiki Momoshiki would try to take Kawaki and feed him to the Tentos. Then it'd be game over. So Kawaki's technically right here. But what we see here is that there's an unwavering faith that Sarda has in Boruto that this won't happen. This scene, in a lot of ways, is similar to what you had in the Injustice comics and the Injustice cartoon movie that came out a few years ago. We get Superman and the Flash and they're playing chess while they're having this moral debate on should you kill criminals based off of their past actions? Should you kill someone based off of the possibility of what they might do in the future? 
future with Flash telling Superman his idea to kill a threat before the threat actually happens is the wrong stance because people have the right to make the decision to go down whatever path they go down. Sarda is basically taking that side in the debate because she knows that Boruto's innocent, but also she knows it's not right to hold Boruto to a death sentence or something that might happen in the future. Boruto deserves a chance to solve that problem before you talk about killing him. And she throws in Kawaki's face, basically saying, hey, by your logic, then we should kill you then. You are also Notsuski. Now to the naked eye, that does look like it's just Sarda being sarcastic, but it's also a very thinly veiled threat. She just put Kawaki on notice. She'll kill him if she gets the chance to do so if it ever came to a situation where Kawaki forced her to make that choice. While there is a noticeable gap between these two, how large we can't really assess at this point in time. We can only speculate. Sarda at least has the balls to at least throw it out there by warning Kawaki don't put yourself above the fray. Yet that's exactly what Kawaki does here. He basically says, yes, I am an Otsuski, but I'm an exception to the rule, which at this point is both interesting as well as a bit of insight into Kawaki because he's still sticking to his goal that he told Naruto. He's going to kill all the Otsuski, including Boruto, at which point Kawaki said he's willing to disappear. And you have to wonder if by disappear, he means what he told Naruto before he sealed Naruto away, which is that he's willing to die at Naruto's hands if it gets to a point where Naruto wants to kill him for what he did to Boruto. And that's why you see him telling Sarda, you don't get to choose when my role ends is so huge but Sarda one doesn't have that information or context and two she isn't backing down on it one bit and at least it's Shikamaru stepping in to break up the fighting however we see more brilliance from Sarda in that she's quickly turning the situation around by telling Shikamaru that they should look at the current circumstances as basically this is the enemy of my enemy being my friend Boruto is clearly trying to stop Code so instead of trying to kill Boruto why don't we focus on taking down Code first and you can tell that this annoys Kawaki because she's openly trying to buy Boruto time to prove himself innocent and she's using Code's invasion as well as a possibility of being able to save the people who are turned into a tree because she knows as a Hokage Shikamaru still has an obligation to those people to try and save them he can't view them as being collateral damage and if Boruto has a way to save them then Boruto is unnecessary evil in short Sarda just checkmate Kawaki in this round of chess here this match is hers but the larger game between these two is not over because as we'll see with Boruto while these two are going back and forth Boruto's the one who's literally fighting for his life Boruto draws out his sword as he stares down the four tentails and the one who he had been previously too shook to engage with emerges out of the claw mark that's near Boruto for a sneak attack but Boruto not only dodges the attack but when he does so he gets a good look at it and we see now why he was so shook before this ten tails looks just like sasuke which is our first sign that sasuke has been bitten by one of the ten tails on screen before all this took place and we now see why the toad is on board to get out of here because a ten tails version of sasuke that is trouble and as if to show why this is the case with a simple shidori of its own this ten tails sasuke is able to counter boruto's or sing on uzihiko with ease and as boruto begins to start trying to fight back against ten tails sasuke the ten tails who looks like bug tries to land a sneak attack to devour boruto and this whole time code's watching the situation and for the first time in the entire run of his character he does something smart he retreats however it's not because he sees this battle is too far out of his weight class but it's because he sees the situation for it is these ten tails are trying to carry out the will that's left behind to him by ishiki's spirit to harvest a chakra fruit and if these ten tails are able to turn it into Tsuki, then so be it the will of the clan has lived on through their actions and code is enough of an Tsuki worshiping nut job that he'd sacrifice himself if it meant that one of them could eat the chakra fruit or if this could be him just making a play to let everything play out and then when everything is done he just reaps the benefit of getting a god tree and the chakra fruit himself after the fact code's reasoning it isn't revealed in this moment in the arc right now so we can only speculate as to why he actually left now what's fascinating about these tentails being able to use the jutsu of the people that they consumed or that they've bidden which makes sense given what ishiki stated to us in boruto naruto next generations all genetic data that has lived
lived or currently lives on earth goes into making a chakra fruit as he told code so the idea of them biting and being able to utilize some of the jutsu of the person that they bit it's basically a transference of data through chakra and the fact that you got a tento sasuke now you kind of see exactly why sasuke had to lose the rinnegan because imagine a tento sasuke that has sasuke shaw rinnegan and also has a mani teji car and all of sasuke's power that comes from having a rinny sharing on this makes a lot of sense now these things they look like shinobi if they bit they're able to use the jutsu and powers as well they are a problem boruto upon realizing he can't win four versus one quickly uses the flying raijin to get away and the ten tails it looks like jigen reveals that due to them being so freshly awakened they allowed themselves to get carried away in the battle due to nothing more than mere curiosity and that they will track down boruto wherever it is that he's going to and that he won't be able to escape his destiny that's where we end off the chapter in this first arc in a huge heartbreak boruto is shown sitting under the tree looking at sasuke's headband clearly emotional and has to recompose himself when kashin koji steps out the shadows to warn him that boruto using that power almost instantly destroyed the planet and tells boruto he won't try to calm him down from the emotional state that he's in but that boruto should have known that this was a possible outcome which is that they aren't going to be able to save sasuke and that they now have to turn their attention to fighting the looming threat ahead we close out the arc with boruto looking up at sasuke who is trapped in the tree and boruto saying that sasuke is going to have to wait just a little bit longer so this is clearly a nod to the fact that yes boruto was likely saved by sasuke who in an act of sacrifice likely got bitten in order to save boruto from those tentail soldiers but given boruto's desperation it does seem like there's a time limit on how long sasuke can remain in that tree before it goes from he's still alive to he can't be saved and i say that because a tentails is still a ten tails we know for a fact that when a divine tree is used you only have a certain amount of time to pass before the people trapped in and end up becoming a white zetsu while sasuke isn't a cocoon right now so it's probably not a danger of him becoming a zetsu he is still trapped in this tree with no sign of consciousness so there is clearly a clock that boruto's racing against which is gonna be my chapter question you guys do you guys think there is a time limit for boruto for how long he has to save sasuke by or is this different than the white zetsu situation well you think that over click here to watch this naruto explain video <laughs>